pretty amazing worship. Can you tell by the worship songs we're going to be talking about today? There's one word. You may know what that is. Shake. <laughs> so he got me back for the other day. He wanted me to say awesome, and I didn't. So that was awesome. <laughs> love. We're talking about love. It's February. It's the month of love. All about love. And I thought that whenever you got married, that February was just going to be this just fairy tale of a month. The whole month is going to celebrate love, and then you get in for a rude awakening because it's not like that at all. Because we struggle with this stuff. We struggle with this stuff, and we struggle with these voices. And we struggle with acceptance. And sometimes we don't even like ourselves. And we have a hard time. Look in the mirror and we see ourselves. And usually, usually what we see, we don't see what everybody else sees. What we see is of our faults and of our failures. And a lot of times we don't even like the way life is even going. That's what we talked about last week. That we're going to love, we're going to be all in. And we're going to love wholehearted. And we learn what love wholehearted means. And it's not manipulation. And it's not trying to get other somebody else to act the way you want them to. It's about you loving them despite the way they act. So, I was just curious. I wonder how many arguments there was over toilet paper or whether the lid was on on the toothpaste or whether the seat was up or down or whether the bathroom towel was on. So, y'all you know these things because these are things we argue, we fight about. But sometimes, it's just really not a big deal. It's just really not a big deal. But we make it a big deal. And the reason why we make it a big deal is because we have these voices, just like that video says, that's inside our head. And, and one shouts that God loves you so much and you are awesome. And the other one says, you are rotten. You're not worth living. There ain't no way God can love you. And, and you remind you of all your past. And then you're trying to say, no, wait a minute. I, I'm, I'm saved. I've been forgiven. And I'm born again. God loves me. And we argue this back and forth. And it's a, and it's a battle. And sometimes we give in. And we think, well, I'm really not that good. Or, or sometimes we go the other way. That, no, no. God does love me. Which is it? Okay, now we know this verse, and we all know this by heart, and it's going to be the Holman Christian Standard Bible. And it's in John 3, 16. And I just I like the way that this that, that words this. And we know this, guys. You all know this. But it says, For God so loved, or for God loved the world in this way, that He gave His one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. We know this. We know that God loves the whole world. And I don't have a single problem with God loving the whole world. I know that. I know that God has got the whole world in the palm of His hands. But where I struggle with is when it comes to me. Now, we know that God loves everybody, but how does He feel about me? And like, it seems like everybody else's, their marriage is always better than mine. Or their jobs is always better than mine. Or their life seems to be always going better than mine. And God's got their hand, but I, what about me? I mean, do you ever struggle with that about God's acceptance and His love? And then you got the devil coming in behind her and He tells you, you scat away. You ain't worth nothing. You dirty. You remember what you did last week? You remember what you did 10 years ago? 10 years ago. Yeah, you made a mistake 10 years ago. And He reminds you of that and then you start wallowing in that pity. Wallowing in it. Next thing you know, you completely forget that God even loves you. Where does this fit in? We know God loves the whole world. And we sing this song, you know, when we're little, He's got the whole world. And, he's saying, and we know that. And we don't have a problem with that. But I'm talking about you personally. You personally. Does God love you? And immediately you would say, yeah. Yeah, He loves me. Sure, He does. Me. But when Satan comes and tells you, oh, you told a lie. Remember, you done this 10 years ago. Remember what you done? You remember what you did? You, you're unforgivable. That there ain't no way God can give you grace under that. And that's what that video is all about because we have these voices and one shouts and the other just whispers. And which one do we listen to? Now I struggle with this and if I struggle with it, I thought for sure you guys would struggle with this. So here's the ultimate question is, does God love us? How does He feel about me? How does He feel about you? How does He feel about you and your life? How does He feel about you and where you're headed? How does He feel about you? Just you. Because what we're going to do today, we're going to look at four people who everybody else absolutely hated. They thought that they were the scum of the earth. And we're going to see what Jesus has done to them because it's absolutely amazing. And the first one we're going to talk about is in the Luke chapter 19. And I love this. I love this. And again, it's going to be in the home. And the uh, series one of those scriptures up here for you. So if you have your Bibles, turn on Luke chapter 19. But this is an awesome story. It's about Zacchaeus. And y'all know the story about Zacchaeus. And we all know, you know, Zacchaeus, he was a... We little man and a we little man was he. So he climbed up in a 
before the Lord he went to See, we know the story about Zacchaeus. We know this. Y'all got it down pat. Wow. So, uh, yeah, so this, again, it's a very familiar story. And we know this, but what you may not know this, here's what you may not know about Zacchaeus. He was a dirty, rotten, thief, lying, cheating scandal. How would you like that for a definition of you? Don't go seeing so-so and they're a lying, cheating, scandalous thief. I don't want nobody to describe that to me. And that's who Zacchaeus was. He was a tax collector. And the way they made their money was, the king, they would go collect taxes for the king. And they would just have a percentage they were supposed to take and pocket for themselves to make a living. To buy milk and bread and eggs. Well, what he would do is that he would lie. And he would pocket more money. Now, we would, I would like to have more money, right? Well, that's what he does. He wanted more money. He wanted a brand new horse or a bigger house. And I have no idea what they did for entertainment in those days. No idea. But I'm sure he wanted a bigger whatever it was. And that's what he done. That's what he done. And then one day, Jesus passed by. And he was up, uh, he was up in the sycamore tree. What was his name? Zacchaeus was up in the sycamore tree. <laughs> I knew Judas kept coming on my mind. So he was up in this tree. And Jesus passed by. And this is where the scripture picks up. Now listen to this. When Jesus came to that place, he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down because today I must stay at your house. So he quickly came down and welcomed him joyfully. Now listen to verse 7. All who saw it began to complain. He's gone to lodge with a sinful man. Now that should tell you what kind of person Zacchaeus was. Oh, Jesus is going to go hang out with a sinner man? Uh-uh, you shouldn't be talking to those people. How many times has somebody said you shouldn't be talking to that person? You don't need to talk to them. They're bad news. They're bad company. Zac Zac Zacchaeus was bad company. And yet Jesus said, come down today. I'm going to your house. Now listen, here's what happened. And so Zacchaeus, he heard all the comments. And here's what he said. But Zacchaeus stood there and he said to the Lord, look, I'll give half of my possession to the poor. Lord, and if I have extorted anything from anyone, I'll pay back four times as much. And I love this because this next verse. Here's what Jesus said in this. Okay. Today, salvation has come to this house, Jesus told him, because he too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save the lost. Now guys, I love this. Because we can identify with Zacchaeus. Everybody else is calling him, that's a sinner man. You don't hang around the sinner man. He's bad dude. You don't hang around him. But yet that's exactly who Jesus went to. The sinner man. Exactly. Everybody else was following Jesus and Zacchaeus was hanging out by himself and he climbed up in a tree because obviously he was really short and he wanted to see and because Jesus is what he wanted to see. And when he saw Jesus, Jesus looked at him and said, Zacchaeus, you, you come down because I'm going to go hang out with you today. We're going to go watch the Super Bowl together. Let's go, buddy. <laughs> and guys, they went. They, they, they went. Is that not amazing? And here's the one thing that we've got to understand about this story. And I never realized it because these last two verses. It's not in the little story. These last two verses. I'm going to read this again, okay? Jesus said, today salvation has come. Today salvation has come to this house. Because he too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save the lost. Guys, this is what Jesus is all about. He's all about this. It doesn't matter who you are. What your last name is, how much money you got, or how broke you are. I don't care the square footage of your house, whether you got Tommy Hilfiger on your clothes or whatever those brand names are. I don't care if you were blamed out or you ain't got no blame to your name. Jesus loves you exactly the way you are, exactly where you're at in life. It doesn't matter if you and your wife fight all the time or you and your kids just can't get along. It don't matter. He loves you exactly the way you are. And here's the thing about Zacchaeus, okay? He never brought up his past. Jesus would come to him and say, now listen, if you're going to come over here you know, to the light and leave the dark side, you're going to have to quit this, okay? He didn't say nothing to that. You know what he said? I'm going to come hang out with you. Guys, that's all he's saying. And here's what I want you to understand about this story, okay? Before we move on to the next one. is that he loves you just the way you are. You cannot earn his acceptance. You cannot be good enough. You cannot please him. He loves you just the way you are. All He wants you to do is accept Him for the way He is. Period. Not one time did Jesus come up and remind Him of His past. How many times has Satan reminded you of your past? 
all the time, all the stinking time. And yet Jesus here saying, you know what? I'm extending grace and grace and grace. I love you just the way you are. I love you just the way you are. You might have messed up back there. But right now, I love you just the way you are. I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, Jesus loves you. Jesus. Turn to the other person and say, Jesus loves you. I know some of you just told that to the same person. <laughs> Nobody told me Jesus loves me. There ain't no way beside me. Jesus loves you. Thank you, guys. We don't, we understand this, right? I don't think we do. Because, guys, whenever Satan comes to you and tells you and reminds you of all your faults and failures, that's not God. He's telling you that I care about you just the way you are. Period. That's it. And from now on, from time to time, you're going to mess up. Guess what? He still loves you. And he's right here with these open arms and says, you know what? I love you just the way you are. We already know when we mess up, right? We don't have to, nobody has to point out our faults to us. Hey, we already know this. We already know when we mess up. There's this other lady in the Bible, and I think this is an amazing story. Uh, this is in John chapter 8. There's a lady... Uh, we've known uh, as the woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. Now, this is an amazing story because guess where Jesus is at? He's at church. Jesus is at church. He's at the temple. And guess what he's doing now? He's teaching people. And while he's there and he's teaching people, these other religious people, guess what they do? They're sick, okay? Because what they do is that they come up with this scheme to catch this woman caught in the very act of adultery. How sick do you have to be to be a peeping Tom and catch somebody in that? And that's what they do. Where they should have been was with Jesus. And here they are coming with this scheme. They find this woman caught in a very act of adultery. Now, if you're caught in the very act of adultery, what are you going to be wearing? Nothing. 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 They might, she might have had something to cover herself up with. And they took her from the very act and they drug her out in the street in the public. Guess where they took her? Church. Guess what people wear at church? Whoa. Clothes. Very modest clothes. And here's this woman caught in the very act of adultery. And they bring before Jesus. And they get his attention. And Jesus, now the law says we are to stone this woman. But we want to know, what do you say? And guess what Jesus done? He ignored it. He ignored all of them. He ignored them. And finally they kept speaking louder and louder and said, Yeah, but what should you do? What, what should we do here? What do you say? And finally Jesus stood up and this is what he says. Amazing what he says. He says, when Jesus stood up, he said to the woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, Lord, she answered. Neither do I condemn you. Go and from now on. Do not sin anymore. He told them, he said, guys, which is without sin, cast the first stone. And he completely ignored them from then on. And one by one, they started to leave. And then he stood up and he said to the woman this. He didn't tell the woman anything about her clothes. Nothing about the act she just got caught in. Nothing. All he said was, Where's your accusers? And I love what Jesus said. And she said, I have none. No one, Lord. And here's what he said. I want you to hear these words. I want these words to resonate loud and clear in your heart. He says, neither do I condemn you. I love that. Neither do I condemn you. Guess what that means to us here today? That it don't matter what you do. You are not condemned. None at all. He loves you just the way you are. And this woman was caught in this very act. Can you imagine the humiliation? Humiliation? I mean, I woke up scared enough in a dream thinking that I was unclothed somewhere. And wake up and was like, oh my goodness, what have I done? And I mean, could you imagine the humiliation from this? And all Jesus said was, I don't condemn you either. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Could you imagine what Satan could be telling her right now? Man, I'm going to die. What was I thinking? And we see these same things to ourselves. We beat ourselves up over these things. But here's what Jesus is more concerned about. And this has got to, this has got to hit loud and clear to us. He cares more about your future with Him than He does any part about your past. Any part. He cares more about you today and your future than anything you've done in the past. Satan reminds you of your past, but God will never remind you of your past. He's looking to your future. Yeah. You may have gotten mixed up with drugs. 
Yes, maybe you fornicated. Yes, maybe you got in with the wrong crowd. And you've done a whole lot of things that you ain't proud of. Jesus will never remind you of that. He cares about your walk from this point forward. From this point forward. I love that when you get married, of course you can write your own wedding vows. Uh, me and Amanda, we done uh, from this day forward to death this part. You know, from this day forward. I love that. Because at that moment, my life forever changed. Jesus is saying the same thing. He's saying from this point on, just go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Today is a new day with you and me. Today we're going to go in this together. You're not alone. I'm not going to leave you. I don't care what anybody else says. I have got your back. It doesn't matter if you're caught in this very active adultery. Yes, you may be naked right now. And yes, you may be ashamed. And sometimes we get ashamed of our past. We get ashamed of what we've done. But that is all of us and what Satan makes us feel like. Jesus says, I'm caring about your future. Go and sin no more. Have a heart change. And she did have a heart change. It forever changed her life. Forever changed her life. And if we can grab onto this one statement, it will radically change our lives. Because guys, you cannot please God. The only way you can please God is through Jesus. That's it. You can't go to church enough. You can't take enough baths. You cannot wear the enough clothes. It doesn't matter. You cannot please God without Jesus. Jesus is what changes lives. And it's Jesus that cleans up our hearts. And it's Jesus that changed her life. Now, I want to pause right here just for a second and ask you this. It was the church people that went and got that woman. And I, I just want you to raise your hand, okay, if, if you wouldn't mind. How many of you would say that you have been hurt by a church? Would you just raise your hand if you have been hurt by a church? I'm sorry. She never had. She never be hurt by church. You know why? It's all about Jesus. He cares more about your future than anything else. It's all about Jesus. Nothing else. And I don't care how many times people pretend we're all jacked up. We all have marital issues. We all have problems at work. And sometimes we think our kids, sometimes we just think that they're crazy. We're like, man, I hope that they turn out okay. This woman was definitely hurt by the church. And I don't know how she'd ever move past it. All I know is, is that Jesus radically got a hold of her and changed her life. From this point forward, may you look forward to your future in Jesus. And forget everything that's behind you. There's this other lady. Uh, she had an amazing, amazing story. And I think that's awesome. Uh, we kind of know her as the, uh, the woman at the well. This is in John chapter 3. I think this is an amazing story. Uh, Jesus one day, he went to uh, this well. And he sat there. The disciples went on in the town and he sat there. And uh, while he was there, this woman came by herself. And uh, she came there to get some water and they began talking. And uh, guess what she had? An extremely rough past. She'd been married five times. And now she was on her sixth relationship living with somebody. And she had most ultimately messed up. Her life was in a wreck. And she sat there and she was talking to Jesus. And she was an outcast. She was a Samaritan woman. And that meant that you were unfit, unclean. Nobody talked to you. You were ashamed. Shunned. And Jesus sat there and he's talking to her. And while, while they were there, she had a heart change. Jesus began to speak words of life into her. And from that point on, her life forever changed. And here's what is amazing what she'd done. She went and she shared what Jesus had done for her. Shared. And this is, this is amazing. And this is in verse 39. So John chapter 4, verse 39. And this is what she done. It said, now, she went and told everybody. She said, now, many Samaritans from that town believed in him. Talking about Jesus. Believed in Jesus. Because... Of what the woman said when she testified, he told me everything I ever did. I love this. Therefore, when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with him, and he stayed there two days. In verse 41, many more believed because of what he said. And they told the woman, we no longer believe because of what you said, for we have heard of ourselves and know, and know that this is really the Savior of the world. Now, I want to ask you a question, okay? 
She experienced a life change. She experienced a life changing love and presence of God. How many of you would just raise your hand and say, I have felt the power and the presence of God. I have felt God's love. Do you raise your hand up? This is awesome. She did too. And it wasn't good enough for her. She was excited and she was pumped up and she went and told everybody. And they came and said, okay, well, we got to check this out for ourselves. This is kind of what I'm feeling about with church right now with Uplift. Because we're getting excited and we're going and we're telling other people. And then they're coming. And we're like, wow. Wow. And this is what happens. That, wow, we don't believe because of you. We believe because we have seen it for ourselves. And here's what we got to understand about this, okay? Not only does God love you, guess who else he loves? All of them, okay? He loves all of them too. He's not happy with just you keeping it all to yourself. He wants you to share it with the world. That God loves them. Now, traditionally, church, we, we struggle with telling people that God loves them. Okay? Usually what we do, we wait until people are down and we kick them with their brother and say, Well, God's in control. He loves you. Okay? I, I don't want to hear that right now. I, I don't want to hear that right now. We had a we had lost a baby. And uh, a church person that was trying that was trying to help. That's trying to help. And they just looked at us straight and I mean, just straight in the eyes and said, well, you can always have another. And I said, really? I mean, here we are, we're hurting right here, and that's what you have to say to us. And sometimes we struggle with finding the right words. But here's what I've always found out. And here's what she did. Look at what she did. This is in verse 39. Here's what, here's what she did, okay? She didn't go tell them about anybody else. Guess what she told everybody? She said, here's what she done. She, she testified, he told me everything I ever did. She didn't talk about somebody else's experience. She talked about her experience with God. Now you can argue with people about the Bible all you want to. You can argue about how much you should give to God, how much you should go to church, what you should wear, should you drink, should you not drink, can you smoke, can you chew, can you watch certain things, can you watch the Super Bowl, can you not go to church and say not watch the Super Bowl. And we argue about all these things. And these things are questionable. The Bible doesn't speak clearly on a lot of things. But here's what she did. And people can never argue this. What God has done for you. Nobody can argue that. You tell somebody your testimony. You tell somebody what God has done for you. They can't argue that. They can try. But I guarantee you they're not going to rip it away from you. Because He has done it to you. And that's what she shared. She went and she shared what God had done for her. And people heard. And do you see what they did? They came back to hear from themselves. So what do we need to know about this? That God loves them, guys. Your family, they're not too far gone. Your boss, not too far gone. He loves them. He loves them so much. Just as much as He loves you. Now, isn't it good to know that He's not worried so much He loves us just as we are? Isn't it good to know that He's not worried about our past but only concerned about our future? And isn't it good to know that He loves everybody else too? I love that. He loves everybody. Everybody. And he's not ready to give up yet. There's one last person we want to look at today. And I, I, I love the story. Uh, this story speaks a lot to me. This is in Luke chapter 5, and it's the calling of Matthew. Jesus just began his ministry, and he was getting ready to go out and call some leaders. And there's when he called Peter and James and John, and he came across Matthew. He's known as Matthew the Levi. He came across Matthew, and he called Matthew and said, Matthew, you are going to be one of my disciples. And guess what Matthew was? A tax collector. He caught a tax collector and one of those dirty, rotten criminals. So he called him up. Matthew was so excited. He experienced a life change and he was like, What am I going to do? I'm, 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 so, so, I got to do something. I was like, I'm, I'm seeing like a Jack Russell here. I mean, uh, Terry, you know, the little dogs, you know, like, or a Boston Terry, you know, one of those little dogs. He's like, Throw me a ball. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so like, Matthew was like, he was like super excited. So Jesus called him. And if you look at the very next verse, here's what he done. And I love this. He didn't go to church. Guess what he did? He threw a party. I love this. In verse 29, here's what it is. Luke chapter 5, verse 29. It says, Then Levi hosted a grand banquet. This wasn't no little bitty family get together. I'm talking about a grand banquet. We're going to invite everybody to a grand banquet. And obviously he used his networking skills and his... Uh, all the people he knew that accomplished this. So he hosted a grand banquet for him, talking about Jesus now. Jesus was the guest of honor. So he had this great big party. The guest of honor was Jesus. Now listen to this. There was a large crowd. Guess who he invited? 
More sinners. That's crazy. Why would you do that and invite Jesus? So now there's a large crowd of tax collectors and other guests with them. So guess who the tax collector people brought? They brought more sinners. Okay? They didn't bring the saints. They brought the people they knew. Okay? I'm sure they brought some prostitutes with them. Other criminals. The thieves. They brought all these people with them. And Jesus was the guest of honor. But guess who was also there? Look at this. But the Pharisees. These were the church people. The Pharisees and the scribes. They were complaining to the disciples. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And listen to what Jesus said. Jesus replied to them, The healthy don't need a doctor, but the sick do. Love that. The healthy don't need a doctor, but the sick do. And he says, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I love this. Love this. Guess what Jesus is so concerned about? Feeding. That's what he's concerned about. He's got you that we ought to just rest in the grace that he loves us just as we are. But we should be satisfied with that until we see this world born for Jesus Christ. He's not happy with your family that's lost. He's not happy with your family that don't know him. He wants to see them come to know him just like you. And this should excite us just like it did Matthew. And he was so excited and he threw a party. Now the word party in church doesn't go well unless you're talking about a birthday. Right? It's okay to celebrate birthday, but you're at a party? What? A party? Matthew threw a party, and it was awesome, and Jesus was there, and I love this, okay? This was about three years ago when I was praying about starting a church, and this, this verse came loud and clear to me, and this is kind of the vision I have for the church, that we would tear down walls so people can hear from God. This doesn't matter about your dress, about what translation of the Bible you use. It doesn't matter about your past. It doesn't matter where you park. It doesn't matter where you sit. It doesn't matter what building. Because this ain't even our building. We sit up chairs. It, it doesn't matter. And I see people sit. Well, I'll say this. Usually everybody sits somewhere different every week. Except usually for the teens across the year. Okay, they're taking up a whole row. Woohoo! I'm pretty wicked awesome and excited because they're sitting right here. That, that, that excites me. And this is what we want to do. Just what Matthew did. We want to tear down walls so people can hear from God. Did you hear Tony Pryor earlier? What he prayed? To remove the clutter. Because a lot of times in churches, that's what we have. A lot of clutter. Uh, a lot of times, again, I've already told you, I'm ADD. Most of the time when I go to church, you know what I do? I count ceiling tiles. <laughs> I, I get bored and I count ceiling tiles. And there's just one church, they got 53 ceiling tiles. I, that's how they got. I <laughs> And every time I go, I recount it, make sure they still got 53. <laughs> I don't think it should be boring. We want you to hear from God. You know why? Because that's what changes lives. I'm not going to change life. I pray, I fast, I seek God, and I want to speak words of life in you that God has given to me that you might hear from Him. Not from me. Not from me. From Him. Because Jesus changes lives. Because Jesus is the one I love this. He said, I have come to not call the righteous, but to sinners to repentance. Guys, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. That's it. Jesus. You want to know what's most important in this life? It's Jesus. I don't care how big your flat screen TV is on your wall. It's all about Jesus. It doesn't matter how much money you got. It's all about Jesus. I don't care how shiny your car is right now. And I hope it's dirty and as filthy as mine right now. <laughs> it's not about that. About Jesus. That's it. We make a big deal out of everything, don't we? And here all they were making this big deal. Oh, you're talking with sinners? What? what? Guess what are you doing? You're, you, are, you guys are following Jesus and he's hanging around with prostitutes? I read this article story about uh, these two pastors. And they, they pastor extremely large churches. One is in Atlanta. And I can't remember where the other one is. And they were talking and they were sharing over lunch and they said, he asked the other one, he said, do you, do you know any drug dealers? Or do you know any pimps or any prostitutes? And he said, no, I, I, don't, I don't think I do. And he said, I don't either, and I think that's a problem. We should have relationships with these people. You know why? Jesus. They, need, they don't need to be somebody. We already know when we mess up. They don't need to know they're in the wrong. They already know it. All they need to know is that there is somebody that loves them just as they are. Guys, these are the two things that I want you to leave here with today, okay? The first one is this. I don't care who you are, 
how old you are, whether you got hair, gray hair, no hair, old, wrinkled, I don't care. Jesus loves you just the way you are. Doesn't matter about your past, only about your future. He's worried about it. He loves you. And He is more concerned about your future walk with Him than anything that could happen in your past. He loves you. You. So now I want everybody to say to themselves, say, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. He loves me. Now there's a second thing here. Okay? The second thing. And that is, we were meant to share God's love. We were meant to share God's love out. That's what we're meant to do. I think Raven was going to say that out loud. Thank you, Raven. <laughs> we were meant to share. Church was never meant to be a country club. It was meant to be a hospital for people coming in those sick. Sometimes we're going to rub elbows with people that might not smell the best. You know what? Jesus done it. I think we can do it too. We can take a bath later. We're meant to share God's love. Sometimes that can be through song. Sometimes it's an easy way to share God's love just by a simple church end about, hey, would you like to go to church with me? One thing that's kind of impressive that Tony already shared earlier, he's been inviting people to go check out the messages on, um, they're on YouTube. We have them on our website. Can you, I mean, can you believe that 48 hours, two days worth have been watched on YouTube. Just in the month of January in 31 days, 805 website visits. Isn't that amazing? That's awesome. I encourage you to find some way to share God's love. Now, here's what I want to charge you with. Okay, here's what I want to charge you with. Now, I'm going to go back up to the story about this woman who was at the well. Okay, the Samaritan woman. I'm going to back up just for a minute. Because here's what a question I want to ask you. What could happen? What could happen if one person, one person, share God's love? One person. What, what could happen if you were to share God's love? What could happen? What, what if? What, what can happen if just one person say, you know what, God? I know I messed up. And I'm just going to give it all over to you. I'll do whatever it is you want me to do. What would happen if we could just let go and let God use us and share God's love? What could happen? I'm going to share this story with you one more time. And I'm going to read these verses. And you can just look at them right here. This is in, again, this is going back uh, to John. Many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of what the woman said when she testified. He told me everything I ever did. Therefore, when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more believed because of what he said. And they told the woman, they didn't tell Jesus, they told the woman, we no longer believe because of what you said, for we have heard ourselves and know that this really is the Savior of the world. One woman who had a rough past. Five marriages. Could you imagine how much you're going to be talked about? I can't believe you're dating so She's been married five times. You think she learned from the first two. That one woman, married five times on a sixth relationship, changed an entire town. One woman. Did you see that? Verse 39, it says, Now many Samaritans from that town, from that town. Guys, I don't know about you, but this excites me. Okay? Because one person sold out on God, sharing God's love, can change the fate of an entire town. What is on my heart? What is on my heart is I want to reach Scott County. I want to see Scott County reach for Jesus Christ. I am not happy with all these people that are unchurched. I want to see them experience the same thing that this woman did. Jesus. Not a tradition. Not song books. No, Jesus. It's all about it. We, we, we have music up on the screen, okay? It's all about Jesus. It's all it's about. Jesus. And that's what we want to throw out to people. Jesus. Not only did He change your life, He can change others' lives as well. My question to you is, will you commit to share God's love. God's love. Will you commit? Say, so you know what? We're talking about wholehearted. It's Valentine's Day. And it's not all about romance. It's not all about you and your spouse. We'll get to that later. Right now we're talking about how much God loves the world so much that He gave His Son. Not just for you, but for everybody. And you and your situation, He cares about you. He cares about you from this point on this way. All this back here behind you, He chucked it, guys. You know what you need to do? Chuck it too. Forget it. I love that word. One of my favorite words in the dictionary is chuck it. I love it. Just chuck it. Chuck it. Forget it. Forget it. It's gone. But from this day forward, I'm going to look at what Jesus got in store for me. Could you commit to sharing God's love? Because I've been telling you, it'll change your life. But the first thing you've got to get over, 
you got to get over this hurdle back here behind you. you got to get over the pipe. I want to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes just for a minute. Father God, you're absolutely incredible and awesome. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your word today. And thank you for loving us. Even in those times that we don't love ourselves. As you continue to pray, there's some of you here that says, you know what, I've struggled with this in my past and I, I, need, I need to get over it. I need to be like the woman at the well. I need to be like Matthew. I need to be like Zacchaeus. I need to get over this and I need to just start looking from this day forward. I'm more excited about my future than I am my past. Sure, I've had a rough past. Sure, I've been divorced several times. Sure, I've done this in the past. Sure, I had a wild youth. But right now, I'm going to look forward to forget everything that's behind me and look completely forward to what's ahead. And I'm just going to give it all to you, God. I'm going to give it all to you. Is that your commitment today? Say, yes, I'm going to forget what lies behind me and I'm going to go forward what's ahead of me. I'm going to let go of the past. Jesus doesn't care about my past, neither should I. I need to let go of my past. When Satan comes and tells me all the things I've done wrong, I'm going to tell him what Jesus has done for me. If that's you this morning, I would love that opportunity to pray for you. Say yes. Nobody's looking around. Hands are going up already. Just step your hands and say, yep, yeah, I forget what's behind me. I'm going to forget my past. I'm looking forward to my future walk with God. There's hands going up everywhere. I want to pray for you. God, you are awesome and amazing and how your word speaks words of life into us. And just as Jesus shared his love and his life with those who are reading about in the Bible today, he loves us. And he's not rubbing in our faces all of our faults and all of our failures. So God, help us that when we look in the mirror, we can see what Jesus sees. Love. He doesn't see our faults. He doesn't see our failures. So God, you've seen these hands go up today. And we are looking, God, to a future walk with you that we will not be drugged down in the past and wall around our self-pity of all of our faults and all of our failures. We're going to be looking forward to our future walk with you. So God, I pray for everybody that's raised their hand up today. And those that are watching online, that you would fill us up with your glory. That from this day forward, we'll be forever changed. There's some of you here today that you need a heart change, just like these other people did in the Bible. Just like Zacchaeus. You need a heart change. And some of you have been trying to do this on your own. You can't go to church enough. You can't clean up enough. And you need Jesus Christ as your Savior. You need Jesus. And some of you know exactly who you are. It says, you know what, I've never prayed to receive Jesus Christ. Or, or maybe you did, or may, maybe, maybe you have just completely and totally gone away from Him, and the day is going to be a new commitment for you. If that's you, you'd like, and you, you'd like to pray to receive Jesus, just, just like these guys, you, you want a heart change, you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, would you just pray with me? Get no way to this is you and God, just pray with me. Just call out to Him right now and say, Father God, I give you my life. Forgive me of all my faults. Forgive me of my failures. I accept Jesus as my Savior. Thank you for new life. Now you have mine. In Jesus' name. If you just pray that prayer, you are now a child of God. And nobody's looking around. This is between you and God. I just had the opportunity to pray for you. You prayed that prayer today to receive Jesus Christ. To accept His love. Would you just slip your hand and say, Yes, I prayed that prayer to receive Jesus. Just slip your hand up. Hands are going up. I prayed to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior today. Thank you, God, for all that you've done. You're awesome and amazing. And I pray, God, that today that you'd fill us up with your love. That we would know. We would know that you're walking with us. I pray for these young people that just now have given their life over to you. And I pray, God, as we're brand new Christians, we're just like little babies. That you'd help us to forget what lies behind us and look forward to our future. There's one more prayer that we need to pray today. And that is, will you make a commitment to love God? To share it with other people? Would you make that prayer? Would you tell other people? I know that we've all got lost. I know that we've got people we want to see so bad come to know Jesus. We want to pray for them. We want to pray for them. And we want to pray for you that somehow you'll be able to share God's love. Share God's love. And it's a challenge unto us all that we just you, just you, can change an entire town, an entire village. Just you, by your testimony, just you. This one, I want to pray for you and say, yes, I want to be the one. I want to be the one that shares and I want to be the one. You just raise your hand up. I want to pray for you. I want to be the one. There's hands going up. I want to be the one to share God's love. I want to be the one that can change the fate of an entire town because it's shared the love of God. I want to be the one 
Just keep your hands raised up. I want to pray for you. I want to be the one. There's hands still going up. I want to be the one. I want to be the one that changes an entire nation, that changes the county. I want to be the one to share God's love. I want to pray for you. Father God, you see these hands and how awesome and amazing and mighty you are. And God, just today, as we read about this woman, at the well, she was a reject. And God, you used her to change the fate of an entire town. Help us, God. We're giving ourselves unto you that we might share the same love and the same passion, the same eagerness and excitement to those that do not know you. Fill us up, God, with your love that we might share your great name to those around us. It's through Jesus we pray. Amen. Would you guys give God some awesome praise?